You know, it's, it's so easy when things are, um, whatever way they may be, uh, maybe we want to just ignore what's going on or what could go on in the future or whatever. And it's so easy just to stick our heads in the sand and, and, and then just think, well, whatever will be, will be. Well, um, I, I believe in looking and seeing what the word says about things. And, and I want to share some things with you. I, the, if I had a title for this tonight, it'd be, well, it's a question. What's coming? What's coming? So if you'll look with me, I'm going to read um, 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm going to read uh, several verses there from the King James. And I'm going to go back and read a few of them from the Passion. But this is talking about the last days. Uh, the last days. You realize there are uh, days that are going to be the last days on planet Earth. And I believe we're living in, I heard somebody else say this today on the Victory Channel. We're living in the last of the last days. I really and truly believe it. So if you look here with me, we're going to read and it says this, no, don't just think. No, he said, no, this, this, no, also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Um, we can't wish away what he said was going to happen. It's going to happen, just like he said. We just got to be in the right position when it does happen. Because there is a, a good place to be in when bad things happen. And so, anyway, it says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, which means without self-control, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead silly ca captive silly women laden with sins, Led away with divers' lust, ever learning. This is something really you can look and see. People are ever learning. People are education crazy today, if there's such a thing. Um, but, but for the wrong things, for the most part. Ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Learning the wrong things, studying the wrong things, or not studying the right things. Now, as, now, however you say these words, I'm just going to say Jannies and Jambres <laughs> withstood Moses. So do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Sound familiar? Just watch the news. Watch society. <laughs> but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs was also. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, Paul was telling Timothy here, my manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Boy, that's good to know, isn't it? Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus, he said, <coughs> shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived but continue here's the key continue in the things which we've been assured of learned and been assured of knowing of whom we've learned them we've learned them from the faithful one god almighty he said in that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in christ jesus and he goes on to say that and this is something we need to really pay attention to says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine. You can put your life on what this says. For reproof, in other words, to maybe show us where we are wrong. For correction, if I'm wrong, I want to be corrected. Amen. 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 If you're wrong, you want to be corrected. It says for instruction in righteousness, the right things and about righteousness itself. Verse 17. I want it there. 
Well, it says that the, here's the reason for that. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Perfect, complete. That we may be complete and thoroughly furnished and everything we need for all good works. Now I want to go to the Passion. I'm not going to read all of that in the Passion, but I'm going to read a few of those verses though in the Passion. Start back at verse 1. It says, but you need to be aware that in the final days, the culture of society will become extremely fierce and difficult for the people of God. Why? Because it's going to be so different from the way we're supposed to be living. Right? And, and what we know as far as it's going to be really antichrist. It says people will be self-centered lovers of themselves and obsessed with money. They'll boast of great things as they strut around in their arrogant pride and mock all that is right. Are we hearing that? That's persecution in itself. They'll ignore their own families. They'll be ungrateful and ungodly. They'll become addicted to hateful and malicious slander. Man, you see that especially on election years everywhere. Just people not caring what they say. Slaves to their desires. They'll be ferocious belligerent haters of what is good and right. Man, you see that everywhere. With brutal treachery, they'll act without restraint. People just do what they want to do, and it seems like nobody stops them. Bigoted and wrapped in clouds of their conceit, they'll find their delight in the pleasures of this world more than in the pleasures of loving God, of the loving God. He says, they may pretend to have a respect for God, but in reality, they want nothing to do with God's power. And then I want to skip down to verse 12. And I'm going to read, I guess, about three verses right there. And then we're going to move to another place. I'm doing a good bit of reading, a Bible scripture reading here to begin with to get us where we're going. It says in verse 12, For all who choose to live passionately and faithfully as worshipers of Jesus, the anointed one, it says they'll also experience persecution. It says, but the evil men and sorcerers will progress from bad to worse, deceived and deceiving as they lead people further from the truth. We see in all this, it's everywhere. It says, yet you must continue to advance. He's saying to us, even though it's like that, and the tide of the world is against the people of the word, the people of God, he says, you must continue to advance in strength, with the truth wrapped around your heart, being assured by God that he's the one who has tr truly taught you all these things. And I want to talk about some of those tonight. But I want to look at one more place, though, that talks about end time stuff in last days in Matthew chapter 24. If you look there with me, and I'm reading from the Passion here. I'm going to start in verse 3, read down through this, and then I'm going to share with you some thoughts that, that uh, the Lord gave me early this morning and... Also, I'm going to share a prophecy and a dream that, that I have, um, that's, that's come to me through different ones. And I, and I just want to share them with you. Um, in verse three here in Matthew chapter 24 in the passion, it says, and I'm going to read down through 14 real quick. It says later when they arrived at the Mount of Olives, his disciples came privately to where he was sitting and said, tell us when will these things happen? And what supernatural sign should we expect to signal your coming and the completion of this age? You understand this age is going to complete. This life is going to be completed one day. We're not going to stay here forever. We're not, it's not going to be like this forever. We're not going to stay in this life forever. It's coming to an end. Quick. I said quick. Jesus answered. At that time, deception will run rampant. Deception is running rampant. It's wild. So it says, so beware that you're not fooled. For many will appear on the scene claiming my authority or saying about themselves, I'm God's anointing, and they'll lead many astray. You'll hear wars nearby and revolutions on every side with more rumors of wars to come. He said, don't panic or give in to your fears for the breaking apart of the world's systems is destined, destined to happen. 
the governments, the world's systems, setting up things for a one world order. Things have got to change. Just get, these, these things, are, they just fall into place like it's going to happen to set up the stage for the Antichrist that's coming, the Antichrist, whenever he comes on the scene. So it says, you'll hear of all these things happening. But he said, don't panic or give in to your fears for the breaking apart of the world system is destined to happen. What we got to do is just stay in the right place with God. Stay in faith. Stay in love. Keep our minds set on the fact that we're in this world, but I'm not of this world. And Jesus has already prayed to the Father that he would not take us out of this world. You know, it's, it's not a big, it's not the thing about just, just trying to get us out of here. Because we're the body of Christ that's responsible of getting this gospel to the people out here. We're the light. Now, Jesus first said he was the light, and he still is. But then he looked at us and he said, you're the light of the world. So it's our time to shine. Amen. So Jesus said, I'm not asking you, Father, to take them out of the world, but I'm asking you to protect them from the evil that's in the world. That's in that prayer in Luke chapter 16, I mean 17. He was praying for us. But all these things are going to happen. He said, but it, it won't be, it won't yet be the end. It will still be unfolding. And we're at that place now. It's still unfolding right now. It says nation will go to war against each other and kingdom against kingdom. There will be terrible earthquakes, seismic events of epic proportion, horrible epidemics. We've already seen more than an epidemic. We saw a pandemic live through one past few years. And famines in place after place. This is how the first contractions and birth pains of the new age will begin. You can expect to be persecuted, even killed, he was telling them then. He said, for you'll be hated by all the nations because of your love for me. Then many will stop following me and fall away. They'll betray one another and hate one another, which King James, you know what it says, many shall uh, betray one another, many shall be offended and Luke 17 and 1 says it's impossible, but that offenses will come. By the way, I said Luke 17 on that a minute ago. That was John 17 where the prayer was. But uh, he said, <clears throat> verse 11, and many lying prophets will arise, deceiving multitudes and leading them away from the path of truth. There will be such an increase of sin and lawlessness that those whose hearts once burned with passion for God and others will grow cold. Now these are signs we don't need to be a part of. He said, and he's talking about people now. He's talking about agape love right there. The God's love, people that have the love of God shed abroad in their hearts. He's saying it'll wax cold, the way the King James put it. Now these are things we need to guard against. People that that happens to are in trouble. He said, but keep your hope to the end. And you'll experience life and deliverance from all this. Yet through it all, this joyful assurance of the realm of heaven's kingdom. You know what's so good? Father God has already delivered us from Satan's kingdom and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus. We're already in the kingdom. And we got we to stay kingdom minded through all of this. We got to remember that in Psalm 103, verse 19, I believe it is, it says his kingdom rules over all. We're kings in his kingdom. He's given us the keys to the kingdom. We got to stay kingdom minded. We got to remember that. I'm in this world where all this darkness is at. And I'll be here till I leave. We all will, right? We'll be here till we leave. So we got to keep our love issues settled. We got to stay in faith because 1 John 5 and 4 says, He that believeth overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We got to stay in love, we got to stay in faith, and we got to stay kingdom minded. And we got to remember, too, that because Father God has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, He's made us kings in His kingdom. And he said in Luke 10, 19, you know what it says? Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Uh, the Passion Translation says something to the effect over Satan's kingdom. 
and nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. We got to remember we're kings in the kingdom and we've got to stay in authority. We've got to keep our confessions of faith going. We've got to make our decrees and declarations. We got to hold fast our confession of faith without wavering. We got to prophesy the word over our lives. We got to be strong for what we've got to do. Amen? Amen? He said, yet through it all, this joyful assurance of the realm of heaven's kingdom will be proclaimed all over the world, providing every nation with a demonstration of the reality of God. And after it, this, the end of this age will arrive. So it sounds like there's some things yet to happen, right? It sounds like there's going to be a grand finale. The darkness is going to get darker, but the light's going to get lighter Amen. and brighter. Amen. Several things mentioned here in Matthew chapter 24 that, you know, we've already seen a lot of, even in our lives. We've seen nation rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Um, we've seen some earthquakes, or I haven't actually been in an earthquake. We see it on television where they've hit other places. Uh, I, I don't know if I've ever been in one. Uh, we've lived through a pandemic. Uh, I don't think in my lifetime, though, I've known what a famine is. And I, and I was thinking, you know, uh, and one or two of these prophecies, prophecies that are, are out, and it pretty much, it just lines up. I mean, usually when there's a famine, there's a shortage of money too, right? You know, where people, either they can't afford it or, or either it's just not available. But he said there's going to be famines. Maybe we've not seen that. I'll tell you another thing we've not ever seen in our lifetime. That's a civil war in America. We've seen America go to war in other places, but we've not seen a civil war in America. But do you realize America, I mean, just with one little spark, this nation, the shape it's in could be in a civil war. We've never seen anything like that on home turf. Not us. It's, there's been one in America, but not with us. Well, not while we've been alive, anybody in this room. And, you know, there, there's, there's a few other things that maybe we've never seen that could just still got to happen. Um, so I just, <clears throat> I, I'm thinking about pestilences. That's why, you know, when he said pestilences, that's talking about epidemics and pandemics, contagious uh, outbreaks of disease. COVID was terrible. I know people that died with COVID. Uh, Loved ones of people sitting in this room right now passed away with COVID. But it, it wasn't like the bubonic plague or the black plague. I was asking Dave today, it, it was uh, John G. Lake, right? That whenever, whenever that happened, I mean, there was just people dying like flies everywhere. And uh, nobody, nobody would bury him because they were in fear to get around them. So John G. Lake, he knew his kingdom authority and he was a man of faith. And him and I think maybe one more person helped him and they went and buried those people and it never affected them. But that's what I'm talking about. There, there's, a, there's a supernatural place we've got to get to. Amen. It's in the kingdom, it's in faith and it's in love. Right? So I just, I want to encourage you. Hey, don't, don't think that we're going to be overcomers with our heads stuck in the sand. Hoping it'll go away or hoping it won't come or whatever that kind of stuff. I don't know what kind of pestilences are coming, but, but we've not seen pestilences like other places have. Or maybe people that earlier, in, maybe here, have in the past. But things can get worse in this world. But we got to know who we are. We got to know what's ours. We've got to really learn to not lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge Him and trust in Him with all our hearts. We've got to really learn how to do that. And and I'm not saying that I'm not. You know, the Lord don't give us words like this to scare us, but to prepare us. Um, fear is the last thing we need. I said, fear is the last thing we need. And God didn't give us a spirit of fear. But he gave us a spirit of power over the darkness, spirit of love. Faith works by love. We got to have all the love issues settled. We got to we got to make sure of that. 
in the spirit of a sound mind because fear and worry and depression and all this stuff, it'll make you go crazy. Make you lose your mind. Make you do the wrong things. Believe the wrong things. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Can you say glory to God? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to read you a dream. Um, it's a pastor named Chris Reed. I don't know him personally. But um, I, I heard him telling about this dream. And this dream, I think he had the dream on March 9th, 2024. And I just want to show you kind of... You know, the Bible talks about in the last days your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. It talks about visions and dreams. Um, it talks about prophecies. And these are all ways that God speaks to people. Every, I know that every prophecy we've ever heard didn't turn out exactly the way that we heard it. But um, we, that doesn't mean we don't believe in true prophecy, right? Uh, it don't, I, I mean, and, and you know, when you have a dream, if it really means something, it really has an impact on you to where um, you, you just can't forget it and it just won't go away. It's a spiritual dream, right? It's most likely a dream from God. Sometimes the enemy will try to bring dreams. But anyway, this pastor had a dream and he named his dream and he called it a rebirth of America. He said it was a conditional dream, though, which we have to respond to correctly for it to turn out the right way. And I believe that has to happen with, you know, prophecies can come forth. But if we don't respond to them the right way, some prophecies are conditional. If we don't respond to them the right way, they may not turn out the way they were prophesied. So it says the dream started as something that was about the eclipse that happened on April the 8th, 2024. But somehow in the dream, he saw a woman conceiving a baby. And then he saw when she was about five months pregnant, which was around November, which is the time of the elections in America. Now listen, I'm not up here preaching some political sermon tonight. I'm not going there with that. Uh, that's not what I'm up here doing. I'm talking about end time stuff. And the way the Bible said it was, it was going to be, even the, but it includes what's going on in America and what's been going on in America for these past few years, especially uh, the decline. And it's been around elections. It's been around messed up stuff, right? So it said he, in this dream, he saw a woman conceiving a baby. He said she was about five months pregnant, which was around November, the November elections time from uh, uh, April the 8th of the time of um, the eclipse. So May, June, July, August, September, October, November. That's seven months, as he said, five. So anyway, it's around that time from, it may have been when he was talking about something else. He mentioned something about July. I do remember that. Anyway, he says, there was some traumatic event that was likely to throw her into early labor. So more than just however many months it was, it was the things he saw in the dream. He said, or even threatening the loss of the life of the baby. In other words, uh, it, something could have happened to the baby before it was born. And it says, this event caused absolute chaos that affected the nation. And it seemed like it was what I referred to uh, he referred to it as an epic October surprise. And it was right before the election in October is what it was. It says, even though I didn't limit it to happening just in October, but it was like pandemonium set in. He said, I knew President Biden had fizzled out and they tried hard to prop him up. But this event caused a major division in America right before and during the election time. And it intensified the division to a very scary and intense level. Now, that's what I was talking about a few minutes earlier. You know, just a spark could cause a civil war. Now, that's looking at things in the natural, okay? I'm not talking about in the kingdom. I'm talking about on the world front, right? It says, this built up chaos, this built up chaos went on from the summer and fall of 2020 till July of 2025. 
says, then the dream shifted. He said, and I was somehow in 1968 and I was given an old newspaper with the news of the assassination of two major leaders in the same year of this same of this Chicago Democratic Convention. He said, now I knew that Bobby Kennedy and Martin Luther King Jr. were both tragically assassinated in 1968. And he said the Democratic Convention was in Chicago and the Democratic Convention is in Chicago this year, in 2024. This was all his dream. He said, so I knew there was, so, well, there was chaos happening around that time when I saw this newspaper. And he said, and I felt like it was a warning of potential coming assassination attempts, in which we know there's already been one of them. He said, and I saw chaos in the streets, the economy, remember that part? Shakings, literal shakings. And there was this huge awakening of the evil and corruption going on in America. He says, it was like the vast majority of the nation said, we can never let this happen again. And if you remember right after the election last time, chaos went crazy in the streets in America. It kind of died down. But he mentioned right here, he, he, saw, he saw that it was kind of like, um, it was a huge awakening of the evil and corruption going on in America. Anyway, the dream ended and it was July, 2025. So this was like a 16 month process from April, 2024 to July, 2025. So he said, so in January, that would be nine months the way he had it counted after April. I don't know, I, I, that's pretty close anyway. Um, so in January, that would be nine months after April, which is obviously usually when the inauguration happens, the baby was born and the baby made it alive. But it wasn't without trauma. It wasn't born without complication. Said so the baby was born wrapped in an American flag and placed in the baby incubator with, a name, with its name above it. And the baby's name was America. He said, that's what I saw in the dream, but it had to be kept in the incubator till July, 2025. And there was a lot more to the dream. If you want to go online and look at it, it was on YouTube. Actually, you can see it on there. It was on Daystar with Joni and uh, uh, some other guy, a guy, and also, uh, and this guy, Chris Reed. And I think it aired like last week. But here's the first thing I heard um, early on this year, uh, Rick, Rick Renner, I may even know who Rick Renner is. Okay. He's, you know, he's, he's more, I would say a Greek and maybe Hebrew scholar, right? I, I've never known him as a prophet. He may, he may be, but I've just never known him as a prophet, but he prophesied something. He actually, I think he and his wife got on an airplane about to fly somewhere early. I think it was early on this year. And, and, he said, I think he said they were still sitting there on the ground and uh, maybe they had just taken off or something. But anyway, he said he began to receive this, hearing the voice of the Lord saying this into his spirit. I want to read you of this. I went back and found it today. I had uh, put it, filed it, but I went back and found it today. He said the year 2024 will be visited with turbulent episodes across the entire globe, especially in the realms of of finances and politics and also in the nations. He said these episodes will be of a sort that they will potentially cause those who are not rooted in God's word to be deeply disturbed. That lines up with that dream. Things that could happen, the chaos and the disorder and all of that. Because um, I mean, whenever you talk, start talking about finances, things can go crazy quick. When money is cut off, um, when you start talking about politics, things can go crazy quick in the world. But here's the good thing. It's, it's about to lighten up a little bit here now. Okay. He said, for those who stay in faith, stay in peace, stay in love, stay in fellowship and keep sowing seed for the sake of eternity. They will experience a supernatural power that will cause them to be unmoved, unshaken, well provided for, 
and to walk around in a much needed divine assurance, divine peace, divine power, and divine and supernatural victory. Yes, those who stay in faith, in peace, in love, in fellowship, and keeping sowing seed, keep sowing seed for the sake of eternity, he said, will be blessed, empowered, joy-filled, and sustained, and they will miraculously thrive even if the world around them is tossed with the tempest. Amen. What a word. Thank God if, if it's going to be like that, the Lord tells us, right? Which he had already told us perilous times were coming, but he's just more detailed in the prophecy. More, yeah, and as far as uh, really distinct with where some of it and how, what of it's going to, you know, what it's going to amount to. So when I read that today, a scripture came to me and it's in Psalm 37. I'm reading from the Passion, verses 17 through 19. Psalm 37, 17 through 19. It says, For the Lord takes care of all his forgiven ones, while the strength of the evil will surely slip away. I know it looks like sometimes, put that in the passion if you don't mind. Sometimes it looks like um, the, the evil's winning. If you back up to the first part of chapter 37 of Psalms, you'll find out. Uh, it may look that way, but it's not going to last. Amen. It's not going to last. They're not going to succeed. The evil's not going to succeed. It's not going to win. But it said right here in verse 18, Day by day, the Lord watches the good deeds of the godly, and he pre prepares for them his forever reward. Verse 19, even in a time of disaster, he will watch over them, and they'll always have more than enough, Hallelujah. no matter what happens. Amen. Say that with me. Back, back up there to verse 19. Even in the time, read it with me, in a time of disaster, he will watch over them and they will always have more than enough, no matter what happens. Amen. Glory to God. Now, here's a couple of things that, that I got this morning. Uh, the Lord, he was just, and some of it started, like I said, it was that I woke up 12 something. And I, I just couldn't go back to sleep at the time. And, and the Lord just started dealing with me about all of this. So some things that came to me. Perilous times are coming to this world. God said so. But the effects that they have on us are going to be up to us. How, how deeply they affect us. Is going to be up to us. Jesus even said in John 16, 33, he said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world, you'll have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Amen. And the, and the uh, Amplified says, and I've deprived it of its power to harm you. Amen. So what are we going to believe? Whose report are we going to believe? Isaiah, Isaiah 53 and 1. Whose report will you believe? And to whom will the arm of the Lord be revealed? The arm of the Lord means his victorious right arm, right hand. Amen. Who will it be revealed to? Those that believe his report instead of believing the world's report. So I said, just because we've been born again doesn't mean these things won't affect us, even in a bad way, to whatever degree. But we've got to stay in love and we've got to stay in faith. And we got to walk by faith and not by sight if we're going to rise above and live above the darkness that covers this earth. The kingdom is going to have to be real to us. And we're going to have to believe in it and live in it in order to live victoriously through these last days. To live victoriously, we'll have to do it on purpose. That came to me this morning. Manually. It's not just something that happens automatically just because I'm born again. To live the kingdom life. To live victoriously, we'll have to do it on purpose. Fighting the good fight of faith, laying hold on eternal life that now belongs to us. We, we, we've not made it to heaven yet, 
But we already have eternal life living in us. We've already passed from death unto life. Is that right? The very life of God. And, and if you look at, what is it? I believe it's, um, is it Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2? Can you go there? You can leave it in the, in the passion, it'll be fine. Second Peter chapter 2, I believe that's where it's at. I mean, Second Peter chapter 1. In verse 2. Boy, this one really, 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 uh, when we get this up. Yeah. May grace and peace cascade over you as you live in the rich, in the rich knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. If he's our main focus, if he's the one we have most knowledge of. Go to verse 3. We're going down through verse 4. It says, everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited into us by his divine power. For all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him who has called us by name and invited us to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. Now look at verse 4. As a result of this, he has given to you magnificent promises that are beyond all price so that through the power of these tremendous promises, you can experience partnership with the divine nature. The message translation says you get to participate. He gave us, he gave us the best invitation that's ever been given and that's to participate in the life of God. If we died, Galatians 2.20, let me finish reading that. The divine nature by which you have escaped through the corruption, the desires that are corrupt. Anyway, Galatians 2.20, it says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And it says, yet not I. In other words, my whole life is not still living. Amen. The life I lived before I got born again. And the life that I now, the life, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Here's what I want you to see. But Christ lives in me. In other words, I have the life of Christ. That's what I live now. That's what you live. You're born again. Your, your old life is gone. It's dead. Amen. The old man's dead. You're a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Everything's become new. Your life is in Christ. According to 1 Corinthians 6, 17, you became one with Christ. One person with him, the living Bible says, the uh, Passion Translation says you come mingled together as one spirit with him. We got the life of God now. We're living eternal life right now. We haven't got to heaven yet. It's just going to get better. I said it's going to get better. By far. We're getting out of here. This, this stuff that we're talking about here is very temporary. It's the shortest thing we'll ever do. Before you know it, we're going to be out of here. And with the Lord forever. That's exciting, y'all. It may get dark in this world, but this is very temporary. We're going to be gone from here. But while we're here, Jesus said in, in uh, Matthew, what is it, chapter 6 and verse 9. He said, when you pray, pray this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. Now the world is not in the kingdom. Amen. But born again people are. We live the life of God. It's a kingdom life. But it's got to be real to us and we've got to, we got to believe that way because the Bible tells us in uh, Proverbs 23 verse 7, as we think in our hearts, so are we. I've got to be believing I'm in the kingdom if I'm going to live the kingdom life. Right? Amen. I've got to think right because how I think. 
That's why the Bible told us in Re Revelation, I mean in Romans 12 too, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can, you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The good and acceptable perfect will of God is that I live kingdom life now victoriously over the darkness of this world. He said, but what he, when he said by the renewing of your mind, he, he said by changing the way you think. You can be born again and still think like the world. That's why he said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, the kingdom's a super, supernatural realm. Amen. I can't be thinking down here on this low level, this worldly level, like the rest of the world thinks, and expect to be living in the kingdom. I got to change the way I think. Not be conformed to this world, but be transformed into kingdom living by changing the way I think. Amen. Lining my way of thinking up with God's way of thinking. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. Yeah. We just need to think with it. We need to think like it. Because we still got our common sense mind too, right? But his ways and his thoughts are higher than ours. We need to get up on that level. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm about to get happy on this. We may have to cancel Gala's birthday party. No, I'm joking. Let me, let me go on and get through real quick. I want to remind you that the word is still going to work during these last days. I want to remind you of that. God's promises are still yes and amen. We're still in the kingdom that rules over all. We've still been given power and authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. In all these things, we're still more than conquerors. Even in these last days, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus and always includes the perilous times of the last days. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to read all that. But just write this down if you're taking notes. Go read Isaiah 60. and I'm going to read the first three verses. And I'm going to skip the other verses I have here. Isaiah 60 and 1 says, Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. We've been given new life. We need to rise up to it. We need to live in it. It's a kingdom life. It's not down here going back and forth with the ideals of this world. It says, shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That's another thing Jesus prayed for us in John 17. That we'd have his glory. So it wasn't just for the people of Israel or Jerusalem. It's for us today. If you belong to Christ, according to Galatians 3, 29, you're Abraham's seed, you're heirs according to the promise. We've been engrafted in, praise God. Born again and engrafted in, praise God. For behold, darkness, it said, shall cover the earth. King James says, and gross darkness, the people. Darkness has done God gross. And, and if there's such a word, it's probably going to get grosser. And dense darkness, all peoples, but the Lord shall rise upon you, O Jerusalem. And his glory shall be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light. Kings to the brightness of your rising. In other words, the harvest is coming in. If we'll just be the light, there are people by the droves, and I believe it's going to be out of desperation, a lot of it. They're going to say, Jesus is my only hope. Amen. And they're going to come to him. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to Ephesians. I want to, I want to read this and hopefully we can finish it up with this pretty much. Um, I'm going to give us just a few scriptures of assurance of victory over this darkness. Um, I'm telling you, victory is ours. God's will for all his people is victory every time, every day. 
victory. In Ephesians 6 and 10, I'm going to read it from first from the message. Y'all hang with me for just a few minutes. He says, and that about wraps it up, he said. He says, God is strong and he wants you strong. We don't have to be strong in our might, but in the power of his might. If you're reading this in the King James, it'd say, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. I like the way this puts it. That's why I'm reading it here. It says, so take everything, the, take everything the master has set out for you. He has set out for us every weapon of victory we ever need. It's just sitting out there. He's just saying, just take it, put on the whole armor of God, take all the weapons of the warfare. I've got them laid out for you. Just take them. I've got them set out there for you. Take everything the master has set out for you. Well-made weapons of the best materials. Everything we need to be victorious. Put them to use so you'll be able to stand up against everything the devil throws your way. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget in a couple of hours. I remember going to many afternoon athletic contests, losing or winning, but after a little while you done forgot about the game. He said, that's not the way this works. He says, this is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. He said, be prepared. You're up against more, far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over but the shouting, you will still be on your feet. Hallelujah. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind and drops out. We need each other. Remember that? And don't forget to pray for me. Paul said, and I'm, hey, I'm asking you to pray for me and I'm going to pray for you. Pray that I'll know what to say and have the courage to say it at the right time, telling the mystery to one and all. The message that I, Paul was in jail. He called himself a, in, in this version, a jailbird preacher that I am. He said, I'm responsible for getting out. We're responsible for getting this word out. Let's get it out. Uh, go to the passion back to verse 10, Dave. Uh, the passion back to verse 10. It says, Now, my beloved ones, I've saved these important truths for last. He says, <clears throat> Be supernaturally. Here's the key. We don't do this on our strength. He said, Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious. God said, Stand victorious Amen. with the force of of his explosive power flowing in and through you. Put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you'll be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings and that's something we need to remember right here. We got to remember this. We got to keep our love issues settled. And if we're walking around all mad at human beings, our love issues are not settled. Amen. The Bible talks about that. He, and he's talking about a place in being angry in Ephesians. And he says, don't even let that be a foothold to the devil. Don't open that door. You're giving place to the devil. Our hand to hand combat is not with people. Period. We need to remember that, especially in an election year. And especially when warnings are given that things could get chaotic. Our hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings. They may be controlled by demons, but it's the demons. It's not the people. God said it, right? Amen? Got to keep that settled in our minds. But there were the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. That's who we're wrestling against.
King James says we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Because of this, he said, you must wear all the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slander. We're going to have to confront him. Amen. I said, we're going to have to confront him. And that don't mean run from him. That don't mean stick our heads in the sand. That don't mean get in fear. You've been given power and authority over all his power. And he has, you have been delivered from his power. The Bible tells us that. So there's no reason that I should fear confronting the slander, the enemy. I, I can just see old Tyler, <laughs> that testimony he gave when he said he walked in his living room that day and he saw that dark presence standing at the top of that stairwell that went down in his basement. And it was, it was, it, I mean, he was just, the Lord just opened his eyes in the spirit realm and he could see it was a demonic spirit standing over there. He had a choice to turn around and run out the front door and run down the street or away from the devil or run toward him. He made the right choice. He ran toward him. When he did that thing, took off down the stairs and he took off down the stairs behind it. And when he got down there, that thing was gone. The presence was gone. The evil presence was gone. We have to confront the slander. He said, for you're destined for all things. These things that the Bible said was going to happen, they're going to happen. He said, but you will rise victorious. Hallelujah. There's the promise. <laughs> he said, put on truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as the protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your, uh, stand on your feet alert. He said, then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies. That's a big one right there. Because the enemy's flat going to be lying to us. He's going to be threatening us and telling us what he's going to do to us and all that. We got to be able to just... Amen. Uh -uh, no, I'm not believing that lie. That's not what the word says. It says, and take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. Pray passionately in the spirit. Boy, that's a big one right there. What a tool. As you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times, pray the blessings of God upon all believers. <clears throat> Let's go on down and um, to go to Romans 8. 35. I'm real, I'm real close now, I promise you. Romans 8, 35. I want, to re, I want you to remind you of this. Romans 8, 35 in the Passion. It says, Who could ever separate us? Whatever comes in this world in these dark days of these last days, who could ever separate us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. For nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love toward us. Troubles, pressures, problems are unable to come between us and heaven's love. What about persecutions, deprivations, dangers, death threats? No, for they're all impotent to hinder omnipotent love. Even though it's written all day long, we face death threats for your sake, God. We're considered to be nothing more than sheep to be slaughtered by the world. But look at this, verse 7. Here's the victory scripture. Yet even in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors. And here it is. And his demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. Hallelujah. Let's read the next two verses. So now I live with the confidence that there's nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. What's so good about God's love? It's our victory over everything, his love for us. We just read that. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, demons, or dark rulers in the heavens. There's nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There's no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love. 
which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. In John 4, 17 and 18, it says, Herein is love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. We have his life in this world. So it says there's no fear in love. But perfect love casts out all fear. Where's the perfect love at? It's God's love for us. There's nothing to fear because God loves us. He has a perfect love for us. There's nothing in this world. So I just say tonight, according to 2 Corinthians, or 1 Corinthians, no, 2 Corinthians 2.14, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. My very last scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, 58, the Passion Translation. Can you get to that one real quick? Second, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, 58. It says, but we thank God for giving us the victory as conquerors through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. So what do we do while we're waiting on Jesus to come and all this to be finished up? Go to verse 58. It says, so now, beloved ones, stand firm. This is God talking to us right now. Stand firm, stable, and enduring. Live your lives with an unshakable Amen. confidence. Amen. We know that we prosper and excel in every season, even in these last days, in this season, by serving the Lord, because we're assured that our union with the Lord makes our labor productive with fruit that endures. Amen. Let's stand and we'll be dismissed. Is there anybody here tonight that you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And you want to receive him in your heart tonight? Yeah, you're welcome to come down to the altar or I can pray with you where you're at. We'll all pray a prayer with you right where you're at, however you'd like to do that. Anybody tonight would just say, I want to accept Jesus into my heart. Let me tell you how you do it. I don't see any hands raising here, but uh, we'll, this will be going online. <clears throat> the Bible says that if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you'll be saved. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's you. That's me. We all have to go through Jesus, calling on the name of the Lord and believing. So I want you to pray a prayer with me right now. I can't pray it for you. You've got to pray it for yourself and it's got to come out of your heart. But I'll lead you according to those scriptures in a simple prayer and you can receive Jesus into your heart right now. Just pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart and my life and be my Savior and Lord. I believe you died for me and rose again to give me eternal life. So at this moment, by faith, I confess you, Jesus, as the Lord of my life. And I believe with my heart that you've forgiven me, you've written my name in heaven, and I am now a born-again child of God. Thank you for saving me today, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, your name just got written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Glory to God. Can we give the Lord praise for that tonight? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We honor you, Lord. And I just say to all of us tonight, the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift his countenance upon us and give us peace. In the name of Jesus, by faith, I bless us and plead the blood of Jesus over us. Father, we declare tonight that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No evil shall befall us. No plague shall come to our dwelling. For the angels of God have charge over us. You said it in your word to keep us in all of our ways. They lift us up in their hands so we don't dash our feet against a stone. Thank you that you said nothing shall by any means hurt us. You said that we live and not die and declare your work. Psalm 118, 17, Psalm 91, 16 with long life. You said you'd satisfy us and show us your salvation. Thank you, Lord, that you preserve us from all evil. You preserve our souls. You preserve our going out and our coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And we declare we love you, Lord, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We love our neighbors ourselves. 
We're your ambassadors going forth into your harvest and we're going to bring it in. Thank you for all the resources we need to get everything done you've called us to do. And we thank you for favor and good understanding with God and man. Everywhere we go and everything we do in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. And Father God, I just go ahead and bless the food that we're going to partake up there in the, in the fellowship area. We ask you to bless it to nourish our bodies, cleanse, sanctify, and take sickness from our midst. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. We love you. If you can go up and join us, we, uh, we just enjoy your company. If you can't, be safe. Everybody be safe. Have a blessed rest of the week. We love you.